Kneecap. Hey. Lovely kid. How are you? There you go. There you are. DJP. There you go, Makara. What's happening? Welcome, Hello. lads. Welcome to the show. Hello. Uh, Paddy Puff. Puff. indeed. Paddy Puff. Um, so, look, let's get to the start of this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Right there. This is... You just need to tidy him up Can there. So yeah. Giblets. I think that looks better. <laughs> I think that definitely looks better. We don't want people knowing who he is. <laughs> uh, so, look, we saw you doing your stuff there. Uh, Mowgli, rapping Oskelga. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you guys meet? Uh, <laughs> uh, we actually met, I suppose, um, I grew up speaking Irish in Belfast and uh, growing up speaking Irish, there wasn't much, I suppose, crack in the Irish language in the urban setting, there wasn't much music in the Irish language, contemporary music. So we started a festival in Belfast and we met each other through the festival and Provy used to be the Justin Bieber of the Irish language world. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. There's the, the believers on the night. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to so, so, so he was Justin Bieber, and uh, who, who was who was Selena Gomez then? Oh, the, uh, uh, no. Mahara. We, we don't speak about her. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, when you grow up in, in, in you know in, in West Belfast, the idea of being attracted to to rap music. I mean, you know, when I was growing up, you know, Belfast was sort of less run DMC, more. Run from the R U C. I I mean, <laughs> it's, it's you're, you're on the TV. Turn on. I mean, so, so how did you guys like like where did where did the rap soul come from? Uh, I think we were just we're all into music and we were all musical and uh, to be honest, we were just looking for ways to get free tickets to festivals. Normally, uh, I like, might as well start a band. And you know what I mean? None of us are musically talented enough to play piano, so. I thought we would just make fucking words sound the same. Okay. Uh, DJ Provey here, you've, uh, you've done a bit of a, a costume change here. Yes. Uh, there you go. <laughs> now, um, I, I, I have to say, um, you know, I'm obliged to say this, that our thoughts are with everybody in that conflict. Some horrific stuff is happening there. I'm also obliged to say that in the politics, there's another side it, and some people mightn't agree with what you've done, so... 100%, uh, but so that's, that's why we're here, and we use our platform to highlight the genocide that's happening in Palestine moment. 30,000. <laughs> 30,000 Palestinians have been murdered by American weapons, and mostly two-thirds of them, women and children. So I think we just have to, that's why we feel, use this platform as an opportunity to appeal to Irish people to attend rallies and protests and to support the BDS movement, to show solidarity of Palestine and hopefully one, one day the Palestine will be free. Okay. Um, so look, just want to get back onto the music here. Um, I'm looking at you here. I, I'm a big fan of The Masked Singer. I'm just wondering how, <laughs> how you went from a school teacher to being DJ Provey. Well, it, funny enough you say it. I know you're not uh, strange from a mask yourself, but we yep. brought you a wee present. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> right. Try it on! Awesome. Try it on! Yeah. Try it on! <laughs> we love it. And if you check that, under your seats, there's one for all the audience! <laughs> I, I tell you what, that, that's going to be an interesting tea cosy when I get back to London. <laughs> it wouldn't be your first time in a balaclava. Very true. Very true. It's Google very it. true. Google it. It's, uh, there, there's, pe there's people here in the audience that are old enough, they don't have to Google that. <laughs> uh, let's be honest. Um, you know, when it comes to the headlines, lads, when it comes to the controversy and all of that stuff, does the controversy follow you around or is there a wee bit if you're looking for that? I don't, I, don't, I don't think we, like, I mean, there's obviously some things we do that are controversial by nature. Like, for example, in Dublin, if there was a young person speaking Irish or whatever, it's normal, normal reality or whatever. But up north, whenever we decide to have a group that's in Irish, it's by some reason political. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I suppose what's political is subjective. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's a language that we converse in. It's a, a, a means of... You know, socialising mm -hmm. and survival, but an hour and a half down the street, it's not political. 
You know yourself. As, no, a, I, as, a, as a man from the north yourself. No, I, <laughs> no I, I, do, I do know about that in terms of the distance. I mean, you guys say that you have uh, people that listen to your stuff in the Shankill. Mm -hmm. um, there are some people, you know, up the road that, that are offended by some of the stuff that you do. Um, are you guys more, would you say you're more satirical than sectarian? Well, I mean, I think at the start, we used to get some Facebook death threats from the South Antrim UDA, but also the dissidents. So I think that really sums up uh, where we stand in terms of our, of our art. Nobody's um, no, we can get those out of land. To come together, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're be... doing something right. In holy <laughs> matrimony. <laughs> it doesn't take um, much the court controversy in the north. No. I'm imagining the wedding, by the way. I think that's... Uh, <laughs> It'd be explosive. It would be. So, look, we're going to talk about the, uh, the film. Uh, you guys uh, have made a, a biopic about your life. Mm. Uh, Michael Fassbender's in it. It won a big award at Sundance. Uh, how does that make you feel? Feels great. Yeah, it felt lovely. Uh, never thought that we'd be making a movie. And an English man approached us one day at a gig and he uh, offered to make a movie with us, but we didn't believe him. So it took him six months to convince us. And uh, we just refused to answer any emails for six months. Yeah. I mean, it's not the first time an English man's tried to profit off Irish fellas, is it? No, it's not. It's also not the first time an Irish man hasn't answered a question an English man has asked. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. You did say yes. Uh, you went to Sundance on a... Or you see Land Rover? I think we have a... Well, not the whole way. No, we flew. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the correct term is PSNI these days as well. PSNI. So the you see Land Rover. Here, get so this. The, so it was this, waiting for us. OK. So this, this, was, this is you on your way into the Sundance Film Festival. What, what did they make of that over there? Um, <laughs> I think it was surprise. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the police actually came over to us when we were on the street. They were like, what is this, guys? You know, I'm getting a lot of phone calls about you guys driving around some Land Rover. You, know, you got 10 minutes was, to vacate the area. Exactly. Like, that was said exactly. That was brilliant. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good accent. <laughs> Verbatim. I mean, you did take acting lessons for it. I mean, it, it's... We did. Yeah, um, how does it feel to be the first uh, Irish language film at Sundance? Ever, ever. At Sundance. Um, yeah, felt... felt... Amazing, and I think it's hopefully going to open doors for more films. Obviously, we had in Callan Kuhn, which is uh, nominated for an Oscar. And uh, I think this one I open doors that people will imagine the Irish language in other realms all around the world. And like any other language, it should be on the world stage. It was a very DIY language whenever it started out, and people used to just think that you could, if you did something in Irish language that it was brilliant. But now we're actually making stuff that's high quality, and it's getting to the the stage now where people are doing it and they're thinking, right, there's a lot more options here in the music, in the movie world, in anything you want to do, you can do it at high quality. He said, like, when it started out, like, it was some basement experiment. <laughs> you know, like, something went wrong between Martin McGuinness and Jerry Adams one day. <laughs> um, for you guys, I, I feel that this year is, this is going to be a big, big year for you in terms of the international acclaim. I mean, people here get your stuff. You know, they understand it. For a bigger audience, um, do you think the world is ready for, for, for your sound? For our, well, we definitely have to explain what tout means in Sundance, in yeah. a few other words. Fleeced. That was Fleeced. another thing Americans didn't get. Uh, I mean, you have to take some Americans by the hands, <laughs> normally, <laughs> you know. Nah, they got the crack, though, in the end. You know, we've we seen, I mean, obviously, it's very colloquial, but... Um, they, they got the crack in the movies and they loved it. And they were, obviously, we won the audience award, so it was obviously very good. I think that was important this as well, though. We didn't want to, like, because obviously there's a lot of funders coming in or whatever, and people, everybody wants to have their say. So we didn't want to go down that route of, like, like having to appease everyone and, like, having to water it down. So that it's, like, this, like, big, understanded film. We wanted to be colloquial about Belfast. And, like, do you know what I mean? It's like you watch anything, like Top Boy or whatever, do you know what I mean? It's almost like their own language. But you pick it up, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it needed to be authentic, and I feel like we you know, came through with that. You know, you're talking uh, also, the, you know, the clip in the film. A lot of people sometimes talk about the differences in two communities, you know, in the North. You know, one of the things that you guys talk about is the stuff that people have in common, intergenerational trauma, mm -hmm. um, social issues. Coronation uh, Street. Coronation Street, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, is that important for you? I, I just think like we get painted because people like to be outraged, especially in the North, I'm sure you know better than anyone. People like to be outraged by things in the North and I feel like if you look in the, like, any interview we've done, we always talk about that, you know, again, we've more in common with working class people in Belfast, mm -hmm. whatever side of the divide, than, you know, rich people in Dublin, even though that we have the same passport. Do you know, so it's like, I think people want to be outraged without actually looking into the facts. And I think, like, do you know what I mean? A workers' revolution is the way forward rather than <laughs> one based on a fucking God that might not even exist. Mm -hmm. We're in a time now where people can do these things peacefully and you don't have to revert to the old sectarian. Like, this was just something that was created, you know what I mean? It wasn't always like that. And people in Belfast back in uh, the 20s and stuff used to live in the same streets and they played with each other. And then this kind of whole rhetoric that it's them against us yep. just started and just created mayhem, really. So we're trying to bring, it up, bring us together instead of dividing. Even though the fucking age of them. Exactly. And we were down in Sandy Row one day and there was on the 12th of July. I was going to ask you about this. Yeah, you, you yeah, made it down was, to Sandy Row. I was standing there with, with Patter, one of our managers, and he was getting some shots and there was a group of young lads drinking Buckfast behind me and uh, they started singing Kerta. I was thinking... Which is one of your songs. Which is one of our songs. And I was like, jeez, if they're going to beat the bags off me, they wouldn't be singing the chorus. So I turned around. It's a terrible way to be beat up, though, isn't it? Yeah, it would have been awful. <laughs> really? <if> I thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a chat, and they, they, they loved it, and they loved the crack, and they, you know, there was no animosity there, and they, they, they enjoyed how much of an open book we are, and there was a lot of laughter and a lot of crack. You talked about bringing people together. Is, is that ultimately the mission for an ECAP? It's a tough one. I wish you had a sand. I wish I had sent us this question before we come on now. <laughs> I, I, w I wish I had been sent some of your answers. I <laughs> think, <laughs> <laughs> uh, most of all, we want to make the Irish language, you know, appeal to the younger people, and especially up north, the people on both sides of the community, that it's their language, our language, everyone's language, doesn't matter where you're from. You have the crack with it, you don't have to be so serious about it. Have a bit of crack, have a bit of fun. Shine. There we go. Okay, here you go. This <laughs> is the new album, Fine Art. It is the debut album from Kneecap. It's going to be released on the 14th of June. I think we can exclusively reveal that, that uh, you guys will also be playing at this year's Electric Picnic. Um, <laughs> and we can all look forward to their movie, Kneecap, which will be in general release in August. Uh, one more time, Kneecap. Kneecap.